Hello everyone, we got extra news for today's video. Again, there has been a lot of news recently, guys. So we can see here from Rocky, well, well, two out of three are now public. Three has been working with regulators from day one to provide digital asset clarity. USDC is digital dollar. XRP will be the bridge to the world. Coincidence, I guess. What do we see here? Bit licensed, New York State's Department of Financial Services. In June 2015, New York State released the Bit License, a regulatory framework for companies engaged in virtual currency businesses activities that act as cryptocurrency exchanges and or function as custodians of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. As part of the application process, the New York State regulator reviews companies' anti-money laundering, consumer pr protection, and cybersecurity policies. As of October 2017, NYDFS has granted bid license to three companies who are all major players in the industry, Circle, Ripple, and Coinbase. In addition to the bid license, the regulator has also granted banking charters to Bitcoin exchanges Gemini and ItBit. It has always been, guess what, XRP, Ripple. We know what's coming around, guys. USDC, not Tether but as well as XRP intertwined. What do we see here from Bifinex? Jim Cramer had another good segment on Tether today, another instance of Tether FUD making national US news. Tether is the biggest risk to crypto and Tether is a ticking time bomb. Guys, listen to what he has to say. Wow, 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 wow. The biggest risk to the cryptocurrency ecosystem right now, so-called stable coins, are like Tether. These are the ones that are supposed to be pegged to something in the real world, like the U.S. dollar. You probably think they are, because most cryptocurrencies are too volatile to be used in actual transactions. Lots of people swap between Bitcoin and Tether or Ethereum and Tether when they want to do business. I think they're much more like stocks, but people want to claim their currencies. And that's how Tether's become the third largest cryptocurrency. Why is this such a significant risk? Because while Tether's ostensibly pegged to the dollar, it's not like it's sitting on a big pile of greenbacks. Instead, each of these stable coins is backed by Tether's reserves. And unfortunately, we don't really know what those reserves are, except that they include a ton of commercial paper, short-term loans to unspecified companies in unspecified regions. That's why I raised a bunch of questions about this thing, because we need those answers. I think they have adopted an ill-advised strategy with little transparency. Since then, we've had a lot of developments in the space, but not many answers. Instead, in the last months, lots of important institutions and politicians have started looking into the risk from stable coins, especially Tether, perhaps at our incessant prompting. I think that's fine, but it's also a step in the right direction, but not enough is being done to fix what many, including some of my Chinese sources say, is a ticking time bomb. So <laughs> Everyone has got sources these days, but he is true. It's a ticking time bomb. People need to stop defending Tether because they will lose all their credibility. Guys, it's all in front of our faces. Finally, it's coming out to the forefront. Expose, exposing Tether. Digital asset investors tweet out, it was never Bitcoin. Again, apparently BSV was hit by 51% attack. Guys, it only has 0.5% as much hash rate as Bitcoin, so it's, it's, so it's susceptible to those types of attacks. When it comes to blockchain security, network effect matters. Again, wow. Guys, it was never these coins. It was never these coins. Because... Look what can happen. Remember about the 51% plus attacks? Yes. Oh, don't you forget about those. Next, it comes from Gold Telegraph. Monetary resets. At least 80 central banks around the world are looking at digital currencies. It is coming regardless if you like it or not. Again, the reset. Look, it's up on the horizon. Listen to this. We think we central banks, and uh, I'm not the only one here. Uh, there are, you know, at least 80 uh, central banks around the world that are looking at digital currencies, uh, we think that it's uh, a duty of us to actually have available digital currencies uh, that would operate to the benefit of consumers. So what would it look like? Well, um, it could be used like banknotes. I don't think it is like banknotes because it will not have the degree of anonymity that banknotes have. And, and I, I find it very interesting, by the way, that in the consultation that we, could, we conducted, um, that consumers who responded in very large numbers said, uh, we want our privacy to be protected, but we, want, we don't want anonymity, because they understand the risk of anonymity when it comes to digital uh, currencies. We think digital currencies yes we're heading into this digital era guys but some people will not be into the same 
rocket ship as we are into right now. Again, from Gold Telegraph, the IMF, World Bank, and BIS are all advocating for central bank digital currencies. This confirms they are coming, in my opinion, with everything moving digital, having some allocation to physical gold is wise. Again, I mean, the reason why this thing happened, you guys see, is because they need to have a problem reaction solution, and as well as the cyber attacks inbound, guys. All about these catalysts taking place. H bar bull is sweet out. XRP is working with the banks. Yes, we don't like banks. Yes, but they aren't giving up control of the monetary system. Facts. So we get rich with them, then oppose them once we join the new 1%. Sounds about right. I mean, guys, these Bitcoin maximalists think that they're going to overtake these banks and the monetary system, all of these things. But no, guys, they're not going to give up their power. It's a crazy thing, guys. It's a crazy thing. Panda Susudo, my article about Bitcoin and XRP was published. We can see this right here. XRP compared to Bitcoin. Benefits, fast, very uh, low cost, scalable, sustainable. XRP, 3 to, 3 to 5 seconds to settle. Bitcoin, 10 minutes plus to settle. Again, transaction fees compared to uh, scalability. And then the sustainability as well, guys. We know the differences between XRP versus Bitcoin. I mean, obviously, you guys have your own opinions on the two coins. But for me, obviously, it's XRP, the truly the chosen one. Messi comes from Val Jester. You're seeing Phoenix symbology literally everywhere. Why? It's showing you what time it is on a spiritual level worldwide. From, from the volcano, NBA video games, pins on people you name it the spiritual strings tying the physical together having eyes to see helps and ears to hear again we know why why do we see all the phoenix symbology happening recently because they're literally showing people what's about to take place next it comes from flare community it looks like coin market cap are ready for the flare network launch having just listed flare the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Launch imminent. Now, I'm pretty sure this was listed a long time ago because I did have a look at it. But I'm pretty sure uh, Sparkle and Flare should be launched in about two weeks from now, maximum. Sasa Sweet Out. It seems some of you believe you created an ETH address when you set up to claim your Spark. To the best of my knowledge, you didn't. You created an Ethereum style address that will be used on Flare's own network. Spark is not an ERC20 token. There we go. Now, for the people who have claimed uh, their Spark through the toolkit, we see right here. Yeah, so if you use XRP toolkit for the snapshot, you'll be good. It should directly go to your ledger. There we go. So you guys know what's going to happen. Now, it gets even crazier with what's happening with Flare and Spark, guys. Reborn as you know, the Flare Network. How you'll become rich without ever having to sell any XRP. Podcast out now. The staking and minting rewards at the very beginning of the Flare Network launch are truly breathtaking. You do not want to miss this opportunity. Now, guys, I watched this video. He beautifully explains what's up on the horizon, guys. Look at, look at this. The daily total rewards. The sum rewards, the daily rewards are truly crazy. I mean, you guys really need to watch this video. I do have all links below because of Flare and Spark will be insane. It, will, it truly will be, guys. XRP Captain Sweet Out, I'm, and I'm really excited. Lots of XRP community members asking for XRP price bull run over. XRP has not even started its bull run yet. XRP will hit minimum $100 after the lawsuit, plus relisting, plus banking funds, plus institutional funds, plus relist FOMO. XRP is world first regulated crypto. XRP to rule all. Again, it's fairly simple, guys. We know what we see. But XRP Sweet Out, it's got to be a mental block. Fear usually causes it. Now, this guy is throwing out FUD. I mean, currency, which it's not. Right. It's it's essentially issued um, semi controlled uh, token. So, uh, yeah, it, it will probably go away. Uh, now he's talking about XRP. I mean, he, it looks like he hates XRP, but we can see right here, obviously a Bitcoin maximalist. But the more people that throws out FUD, it means that we are getting closer and closer, guys. So which is a beautiful thing. Next, it comes from Mr. Use Case. One day the world is going to be like, we actually need this XRP thing for a global settlement. You then rush to your phone to panic sell your illiquid coins, adding to the inevitable FOMO. Some of you will be too late. Not me. I'm here for generational wealth. And we know what's going to take place, guys. Generational wealth is, is inbound. So be prepared for that. But anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys, please leave a like, subscribe, and subscribe. Feel free to be around. Channel. See you guys. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. And you guys, see ya.